Hello and welcome to Perfectly Paired with Chef Jim May. Today we're doing our little Thanksgiving special where it's two of the recipes that uh, we always incorporate into our holiday. Both real simple, both traditional. Um, I have a 16 pound turkey that I'm going to brine. Now normally we have two turkeys and one is smoked over applewood, the other is baked in the oven. So we always have about 20 people for Thanksgiving. This is a nice 16 pound turkey. I'm gonna brine it <clears throat> in a, a little bit of tweaked uh, brine. I'm gonna put brown sugar, soy sauce, salt, gallon and a half of water, some thyme, some lemon zest, and some garlic cloves. I'm gonna boil it, and then I'm going to let it cool or put ice in it. And then I'm gonna take a little trick that I've learned. I either take a nice chest just because it makes more room in your refrigerator. I put a, a bag in here and I will insert the, the bird, pull it up, and I have the brine already made. It's like, like I said, it, you can start with a gallon and cool it down with ice if you wanna, if you're in a hurry. But I'm gonna take all this brine and I'm gonna pour it over the bird. just seal up this bag. Now I'm going to brine it for easy a day, to up to two days, and then you take it out, rinse it, and uh, I, like I said, I'll put ice in here, I'll put another bag in here, and I can put this out of the way and it saves all the room in the refrigerator. So this is brined and ready to go. I will turn it over every 12 hours or so, just so it all gets brined, and that takes care of our brining. Now the other tradition is my grandmother's recipe for stuffing. And I take, I take celery, onions, uh, we got little, the little differences in this is that we use water chestnuts for crispness and uh, some apples for, um, for sweetness and mushrooms for that umami characteristics that we want to have that's going to go great with the Pinot Noir. We dice up celery. That's a little over a cup. It's like four or five stalks. We'll take some onion, one medium-sized onion. Dice that. And the other thing we have with the white is the water chestnut. It's kind of an unusual thing, but I like the way it crunches. And then we have also uh, Granny Smith apples and we'll dice all this up. We put a stick of butter into the pan, melt it. We're going to add this to it. Onions and celery first. Then we'll do mushrooms. I take off the, the stems and slice them. Like I said, that gives a little bit of that earthiness goes along with all the sweetness and the stuffing and the bread. Now my grandmother always used just the cubed bread mix. Um, you can easily just get a loaf of sourdough bread or a baguette and uh, make make your own uh, cubes of, bre of uh, bread and it's because all the flavor is going to be in this pot here. Slice up a few mushrooms. Yeah, the big ones you can cut up a little bit in half, like this. And this is only going to take about six to eight minutes to cook down. Just a little, little bit of the prep doing this. Mushrooms go in. And then I just dice up a, a couple apples. Pour it. Get all those seeds out. You don't have to don't have to peel it because we want to keep it intact. And then cut it into little bits, about half-inch piece of dice. My grandmother Beulah, we called her B, was French. And so this was all kind of new to her, but she did her own take on it, and it turned out to be a family favorite. And 
bless our heart, we still make it today, every time. It always seems to win out. We might do a cornbread or a sausage, but this one is usually the favorite. So I will stir this. It's got a stick of butter in it, which you need for all that flavor and richness. And then I'm gonna take two eggs, Two eggs, and I'm going to mix it with a cup of milk. You can use stock if you'd like, um, or a mixture of both. And I'll put a cup of milk in there. And stir it all up. Now into this, I'm going to put all the seasoning too. I'm going to put in the salt, the pepper, the sage, I got some sage here, I got some thyme, and all this will be tossed with the, let's just get that all off of there. This is, you got, got to have sage for your turkey stuffing. And I'm going to put some salt, and some pepper, and this will go on bread after it's tossed with the all the aromatics that we're sautéing right now. These are the water chestnuts. I get them sliced. Um, you can dice them up if you want, but leaving them that this size is perfect. Um, again, it gives it a little more textural flavor, a little more crunch. And the raisins, do a half a cup of raisins, and that's going to um, give it a little pop of sweetness as well. So I'm going to put these in here. We'll give this about six minutes. In the meantime, you can turn your oven on 375. I'm going to put all the mixture into this little dish and I'm going to pre prepare it by putting a little spray so it doesn't stick so much. And this dish could be made like a day, a day ahead of time before you cook it and just finish it off in the oven along with a bunch of other things. We do the mashed potatoes, we do the gravy, we do uh, yams with marshmallows. Some of the family loves that stuff. <laughs> but we do it all. And everyone does a little bit different stuff, but all kind of traditional. So this is working, all the vegetables are getting soft. I'm gonna add the half a cup of raisins to plump them up just a bit. And again, this is, we just wanna just get soften them up six to eight minutes and you're good to go. And all this luscious stuff is gonna get all that extra to this. These, these are plain breadcrumbs. You can get the herb ones if you want, but I, I'd like them plain. Like I said, I normally can do it with sourdough bread and just cube it up a day or two ahead of time and let it get hard and crunchy like these guys. So the wine that I always uh, have at the Thanksgiving table is going to be a Pinot Noir and Papa Pietro Perry has a choice of 10 different ones, but we pick it since it's a special day and it's got special family, we go with our Pomard clone and this is a single clone from two vineyards, our Peter's Vineyard and our Laris Vineyard. And it's got this rich, dark currant fruit and dark cherry, wonderful, soft, approachable tannins. Goes great with the stuffing and with the bird and with the gravy. Pretty little wine. Like I said, it's gonna have more structure to it, a longer, richer finish, and it's just a luscious addition to your holiday table. We will have a couple bottles of this, I'm sure. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. I'm going to add the whole pan to to all the breadcrumbs. Get all the butter. Get all the juices. Get all the vegetables. And then I'm going to toss this get this with all the vegetables and the juices mixed up before we put in the eggs and the milk. So we want this all distributed really nicely. It's 
smells so good. It's got all that that holiday sage and thyme and butter and onions and celery. So this is the, all the vegetables are mixed in here really nicely. Make sure there's no dry spots. So you can see all the water chestnuts. I'm going to take this, our seasoned eggs and milk. This will bind it together. And these recipes will be on uh, our website as well. And you can you use my grandmother's recipe with my blessing. And it's delicious. So I, I put this in a prepared um, baking dish. I'm gonna put it in the oven for 35 to 45 minutes, uncovered, because I want it to brown off and I want it to cook all the, those eggs and milk together. So this has been in for 35 minutes and it's starting to brown really nicely. And it's all gonna it smell so good. It lights up the whole house with it. All the uh, aromatics and the beautiful bread. Like I said, this can be made ahead of time without baking uh, a day ahead of time. And when you're ready, just throw it in for the last half hour, 35, 45 minutes.